Hey everybody, Captain CA here with Flats Class YouTube. Welcome back to the channel. What are we going to talk about today? Well, it's kind of a review and a tip rolled into one. I got off the phone uh, with a good friend of mine that works for Z-Man and we were, we were really expounding on what a great bait the Z-Man darters has turned into over the past two years since it's been launched. Uh, it came out in late 2020. We're here in the spring of 2023, and I'll get a few questions about this bait almost in every live fishing school that I do now. But uh, I'm going to clear a few things up for you, tell you everything you'll need to know about this bait that will make it super effective, and I guarantee you it'll be tied on a rod soon for you. So let's come over here to the side of the boat and start talking about it. So what can I share with you about the Z-Man darters that you might not already know? Well, you know it's a multi-species bait for sure. Snook, redfish, speckled trout, flounder, cobia, tarpon, grouper, big, huge black drum. Everything eats this. And do you know why? It's because it mimics prawn shrimp. It mimics sardines, Spanish sardines. It will mimic ballyhoo, needlefish, all of those bait fish profiles. It does a fantastic job. So what, what's that hook that's going to get you to try this bait? Well, let me share a few of these rigging techniques and then explain to you how they work so well for me in so many different scenarios. And I think the versatility will sell you. All right, first look. The first look basically is kind of a shrimpy look. It's simple. I've got it here on a jig head. All I've done basically is cut this bait down from six inches to about, I'm gonna say three and a half inches long and it gives me that look. I like this look. It reminds me of the old salty shrimp tout that I used to bounce real hard. If you're uh, Mirror Lore Little John fan, this is basically the same type of look. It's just got a little bit more live action tail. So when it hits the bottom, this tail kind of stands up and waves back and forth. And then after you wait for a two count, you're going to pop it off again. You can make it look very shrimpy. So pothole fishing, fishing troughs around oyster bars. It literally catches everything when you cut it down so that it can look like a jig. Now, uh, this is the Houdini color, so it has a very shrimpy color look to it. Um, but for me, the action's all in that segmented tail. So with very little sharp twitches, I can give this bait a very lively action. And, and basically, all you need to do is shears, cut it in almost half, maybe a little less than half and instantly you have a great looking profile. Uh, let's just say that I'm, I'm wanting to fish some zones around some shadowy docks or some mangrove shorelines. Uh, something I've taught you in the past is to put it on these chin locks rigging hooks. Now the chin locks rigging hook is a cool look and very functional for this. Again, it gives it tons of action. You can work it quickly across the surface so it has that swimming action. You can make this thing look like a spooked needlefish, a ballyhoo, a quick moving prawn across the top of the surface. Lightweight rigging hooks. This one has a little weight right here so that when I do stop it, that tail kind of flops down and has an undulating action, an articulated action going back down to the bottom in shallow water. But I work this over a lot of rocky points here on the nature coast, and it does a fantastic job for me. If I pick a white, or something in a silvery color. I'll work it really quick along the mangrove edges and drive snook absolutely crazy. So those are my, my two most common looks that I have for it. Now I've got more. Look at this. So here's a look I like 
when I'm trying to catch redfish out of a school or maybe a cobia on the back of the ray in two foot, three foot of water, got floating grass, have to work it a little bit slower. So I use this snake locks rig. And what it does is it allows me to have that weight forward ability where I can make a super long cast and then fish it slow. Uh, it's been fairly effective for me. About the only thing I do to this is I cut about an inch off the bait just so that it fits a little bit snugger on the head uh, right there at the, at the top. But other than that, it's just going to appear to be a pipe fish in the water, a big prawn shrimp, something like that, that a redfish or a cobia would expect to find in a group of big mullet or if that are mudding in the bottom, or if it's a big mudding ray, this is a go-to for me. Uh, and oftentimes I will scent um, this style setup for myself and it will perform well. Let's just say I'm fishing some marshy points, some needle grass, places where mullet are just kind of finning on the higher water along those thin grass points. I see that scenario quite often. I see it when I'm in Louisiana, I see it when I'm in Northeast Florida, and I see it here in the Big Bend area in the Nature Coast area. What do I use then? Well, something that's been working for me around Cedar Key and points north has been adding this as a trailer. So I cut, again, I cut about a half inch to three quarters of an inch off this bait. And the shimmy that the chatter gives me makes that tail really dance. And I can throw this up in those weedy environments. And because for the most part, a chatter bait is fairly weedless, I can move it through those thin grass points and I can drive redfish nuts. They tune into that chatter bait thing. I've also noticed in Creek Mouse, I catch flounder. Uh, when I'm fishing rocky edges, trying to get the attention of those large, big uglies, those big black drum, this darker colored chatterbait with that type of trailer, really, they can feel it, then they can see it, and they will get a hold of it. Uh, it's, it's a really effective technique. I've even used this uh, on free swimming cobia when I'm trying to get their attention, make a long cast because this is a three eighths to a quarter ounce um, chatterbait. Then lastly, I probably shared this with you in a couple of the tarpon videos, but when we came out with the new diesel eye jig heads, this is a triangulated extra sharp jig head. They're heavy. I can make long casts with them. I throw them along the bridges, around the lights. I throw them early in the morning and I simply just reel this bait. And it's just like a stick bait, like a needlefish or a ballyhoo swimming close to the surface. But that big wide gap, super strong hook, when I come tight on a tarpon, it goes right through, punches right through, and I can hang on to them with this setup here. And that in the smelt color, or if I take a beer run color, it does an amazing, amazing job on catching tarpon. Uh, this is, would also work for you on some shallow rock scenarios if you just wanted to reel it over those 8 to 12 foot rocks with these deeper diesel eyes. You could probably come up with a couple of nice grouper catches with a hook like this. You can put an awful lot of pressure, get those fish to the surface. Now, if you are learning or you're taking some of this information that we're teaching you, like this tip here on the Z-Man darters, and you're taking them to the water and you're catching fish, let us know in the comments below. For goodness sakes, we want to know that we're helping you catch more fish. And do me a favor, push that button right there and subscribe. I want you to subscribe to this channel. I want you to share it with your friends and your fishing clubs. It's my job to make you guys better inshore saltwater anglers. And I can only do that if you guys are showing up for me every week. We've got a lot more stuff coming in 2023. So don't tune us out. Tune us in. See you on the next one, guys.